coming in Israel to wipe it off the face of the earth. I believe it because he's building the weapons for this extermination. Uh, and everything that we know says that if you can get away with it, you'll do it. I carry with me a, an old experience from the time the, the young colonel in the Yom Kippur War. I remember calling my wife at the end of the fighting. I remember her crying over the phone when she heard the list of all our friends who were killed through this. And then I came back to California. When I went to the first football game after we, I realized that if we did not manage to win this war, uh, Israel would become a part of history and not a single football game would have been uh, canceled. And I carried this a memory with me to the chair of the prime minister. Ultimately, we are standing alone. in Bali and in Istanbul and now in Madrid are close to home for all of us. The tentacles of terrorism are reaching out to every corner of the world. London's worst attack since the Second World War, a series of blasts rocked the capital during the busy morning rush hour. A shocking toll of dead and injured, dozens are described as in a critical condition. Beslan School number one is a scene of carnage tonight. Hundreds of children are feared dead. Every single country in the world is dealing with this on one level or another. You see that the Thais are dealing with it, you see that the Filipinos are dealing with it, the Europeans are dealing with it in Madrid, the Russians are dealing with it in Chechnya, the British are dealing with it in London and in Manchester. And of course you see in the Middle East, whether it's in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Egypt, and of course in Israel, in Saudi Arabia, and you go to Africa and you see that jihadis are operating everywhere from Djibouti to South Africa. All of these areas that we refer to as separate wars, the Palestinian war in Israel, the Iraq war, they see all of these not as specific wars, but as fronts in a global jihad. 